All right, so I'm under the Surface tab and by Base. So let's start with the Fractal Generator, which is an awesome feature. So once you've actually created your terrain and you've got all your filters on here and all of these different effects, you can basically scroll through the seed by either clicking on the minus on the or the plus, and it's going to give you an infinite amount of different variations of the exact same terrain. So really, really awesome feature that these guys included here. And you can click on random. It's going to take you to some crazy number like this. So that's just showing you the power of the seed feature just to give you an infinite amount of different variations of the exact same terrain. So really, really nice feature that they've included here. So I'm going to put that back on zero. The terrain size is basically going to control the overall size of your plane that you see in your scene over here. So if I put this on something like 496, so at 4K, we can see how those details look across a much bigger terrain size. Now, from what I've noticed, this doesn't really impact the performance that much, but it just gives you a nice representation to see how this looks on a bigger terrain size. So I'm just going to bring that back to 2K resolution. And then your precision, this basically acts as a subdivision. So you'll see if I turn on, toggle the wireframe and I zoom in over here, we can see our mesh is triangulated. And I'm currently at one meter. And if your GPU is not that powerful, you can bring this down to something like two meters and you can see the quality. It's going to control the overall quality of your of your terrain over here and the overall quality of your displacement map. So you can see at this resolution, it's looking quite blurry, but this would help for performance sake. Now my PC, I can actually handle this at half a meter, which is at 4K resolution. And if you went to options general, your max re resolution uh, can actually go all the way up to 16K. So if I put that on something like, uh, what is it, one eighth of a meter, it's going to actually render that at 16K. So we're going to be seeing those details on here really crisp and really clear. So you guys could go ahead and actually export out a 16K map from World Creator as well. But you can see now the viewport is really laggy. So I just go back to whatever works best with the overall performance of my computer. Okay, so just keep that in mind that this is a subdivision and it's going to control the overall quality of your terrain, how you see it over here and how it's going to appear on your actual displacement map one, once it's exported. Okay, then the soil, uh, World Creator basically said that this is just for a representation purpose, right? You can see I can turn it off completely and this is how it would usually look against a plane uh, in another 3D program if you display, uh, uh, applied displacement to that plane. So I guess it's just more aesthetically pleasing to have that soil more visible. But what World Creator actually suggested, if you put this on one, you can see where the lowest point is on your terrain and where the highest point of your terrain is as well. So I guess that's just nice for a representation purpose. Okay. All right. So this next feature over here is really going to come in handy, especially if you want to create your own terrain. Right, so we've got this default terrain that World Creator gives us. We can obviously go through the seeds and maybe find something that we find aesthetically pleasing. But what if we actually have a particular idea in mind? We've looked at a reference image. Maybe we want certain parts of the terrain to be higher over here, some tall mountains and some ridges or whatever. We can go ahead and actually create our own custom shape, own base shape that we can start off with. So go ahead. Uh, enable that and then click on edit shape. You're going to see all of these diamond pins in our scene. I'm going to refer to these as pins and you can see whenever I hover over one of these, they turn red. So if I hold on my left mouse button, I can adjust the overall, the overall elevation. So I can either pull this up or push it down and you can see it's just affecting that particular pin that I have selected. So this is a really, really awesome way uh, just to start creating your own custom uh, base shape that you can start off with. But I usually go ahead and click on flatten entire terrain. So I'm going to go ahead and click on yes. And I'm going to start from a clean slate. And now from here, I can start pushing and pulling and coming up with my own ideas and my own elevation that I have in mind. So this is just a really, really neat feature that they've included here. So you can see here by the selection tool, we're currently using the single selection. We can also use circle and that's going to select more than one pin and it's going to be reliant on this radius. So currently with this radius on 512, it's still selecting one, but if we increase that to maybe something like 625, uh, you can see that we can select more than one pin now. So that's just a really nice way to adjust uh, larger areas by selecting more than one of these pins. And now the fall off is going to basically act as almost like intensity. You can see some areas are a lighter red, which means the intensity is not going to be as 
high as these areas that are a darker red but it's still going to be affecting all of those pins that are selected so it's just a nice way to have uh, control over which areas are going to have a higher amount of intensity when you are adjusting the elevation and then the rectangle uh, it's basically think of it as drawing out a rectangle like this as a selection tool so you can adjust the width and you can see now think of it as a rectangle that's selecting all of these pins over here and you can you can do the exact same thing with the fall off as well and now if I wanted to maybe select this row maybe both of these rows I'll increase the length here a little bit and there we go you can see now I'm selecting both of those rows to adjust that so just different ways that you can play around with the overall elevation let's see I'll go back to one adjust that and you can really come up with some really interesting and unique shapes base shapes that you can start using so you could see this will maybe be a canyon over here or I've just got higher mountains and I want maybe I wanted these areas over here just to be a little bit higher so just a nice way to create your own custom shapes and then over here by action you can see we're using the default move up down which is controlling our elevation average is going to average uh, I think the overall elevation of your terrain over here so let's see let's use it on something whoops remember press F to bring it back into your scene if that happens All right so I'm trying to see I don't really use this average that much uh, so it's not really adjusting much in my scene right now uh, but you can flatten certain areas you can see I can go right back to the flat state of our plane over here so if some areas you adjusted them or you elevated them too much obviously you could just pull them down but that's just a neat way to flatten it entirely right down to the actual plane and then noise I think is actually going to work as the elevation the up down as well but it's applying some kind of distortion in the the elevation as well again I don't really use these that much I'm usually just using using the up and down so really really neat and then for whatever reason let's say you have this idea in mind you've been editing it and you want to adjust the overall Sun how it's been applied in your scene just go to scene go to sky and over here you can adjust the time of day so basically controlling the overall well <laughs> obviously the time of day but you can control where those shadows are being placed now as well and if I click on none and click on default it's actually going to add in a little animated skybox in our scene again just for representation of visual purposes right now this won't really matter that much in another program because you can't export this but it can give you an idea of maybe what you would do in another program then you can adjust the time of day here as well see there's even some god rays that we've seen in our scene uh, which is actually pretty cool so just some neat I'll say post processing that you can apply in your scene and control the overall time of day you can see over there we've got the moon that looks that actually looks really really cool in this program uh, so just some nice features that they've added here again if you just wanted to adjust those shadows and apply them in different areas of your mesh but yeah that's how you go ahead and create your own base shape really really awesome feature and of course you can let me just press F you can scroll through the seed and just see different variations of that exact same shape that you've created but if there's a very particular idea that you're going for you definitely want to use this option to create your own basic shape okay so another awesome feature is the seamless properties and what this is basically going to do if you go ahead and select that it's basically going to create a seamless tileable texture or tileable uh, displacement map for your terrain so if I had to go ahead and export this out of here take it into another program apply it onto a plane and then maybe just the the UV size it's basically going to tile endlessly without there being any seam so having that seamless feature in here I think is absolutely priceless it really was a great addition and I just usually leave it on the default settings over here and it gives me a tileable terrain so you'll see if I change the seed over here to something like that let's deselect, deselect seamless and by turning seamless on it's basically just going to blend between these edges to create some seamless terrain for us and I can go ahead and put this on just change the terrain size to maybe 496 by 496 and now we can see how seamless terrain is going to look on a much 
a bigger terrain size as well. So really, really awesome feature. I make sure that that is always selected before I export any displacement map out of here because obviously I want my stuff to be seamless. I don't want there to be any breaks in that uh, displacement map so that I can tile it infinitely um, on a plane. So really, really important feature to have included in the program and I'm really happy that they, that they included this. All right, so the next option over here is going to be the fractal noise. And now this is actually really cool. It's actually going to determine the overall quality uh, or the overall intensity of the level of noise that you see on your terrain. So you can see if I increase the general strength over here, it's going to get really, really intense and start looking really crazy. Now determining or depending on the overall look and feel that you're going for, maybe that's something you like, but you'll see that if we play around with this factor setting, if I go ahead and decrease this, it's actually going to make it a lot smoother, but we're still going to have that general strength applied on here, so maybe that height is still going to be visible, but we'll be decreasing the overall intensity that you see over here, and you can do it vice versa, so you can increase the overall factor over here and decrease the general strength, so maybe we want a very subtle hill hilltops or whatever and but we still want that detail those final details included on there and I can decrease the factor and make it really smooth so it's almost looking like sand dunes right now so that's just a nice way to control the overall intensity of that fractal noise that we see on our terrain over here so just keep that in mind and you control that by using the general strength and the overall a factor. Okay. Alright, so we've just got a couple more settings to explain over here. This edit curve feature, honestly, I don't really use this that much, uh, but you can see it kind of gives you control over, I guess, the elevation of certain areas on the mesh, uh, but I, I don't use this that much. You guys can maybe play around with that. You can see by decreasing the value over here, it's basically flattening out certain sections on the terrain. Uh, but honestly, if I wanted to, I'll just go back into the base shape and pull those down manually. Uh, but you can do that with a graph here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and reset that. So that's what Edit Curve does. Um, edit Offset, I'll, spl I'll explain that in conjunction with the Fractal Noise Level. But just to explain this fractal, fractal noise level, it's actually really important. You can see there's 10 steps over here. And what I've learned from some prolific artists is that whenever they're creating something, whether it's a character or silhouettes, they usually start with really big shapes and then they start adding in those smaller details uh, over time. Right? So you use those bigger shapes to establish your silhouette and the overall shape that you go in for. And that's exactly what this is going to do. Step one is usually going to control the bigger shapes on your terrain. So you can see by increasing this value, you're controlling the bigger shapes that are being affected here. And as that number increases, it's just going to start controlling smaller and smaller details. So you'll see if we go to step four, actually we'll go to step two, step three, and just pay attention to the different areas that are being affected now. And as you can see, it just gets smaller and smaller. So there's step four. Step five is going to be a smaller region. Step six is an even smaller region. And if you go all the way to step nine, you can see it's even, uh, there's the regions on here are just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So it's just a really nice way to control um, the overall detail on your mesh and build up those shapes uh, gradually over time by starting with the big shapes, then adding in the smaller details over time as well. So that's just a really, really nice way to control that using this fractal noise level. And then the offset is basically, it's like shifting detail on your terrain. So you can see, and it also works in conjunction with your, your steps over here. So maybe if you wanted to shift, let's see, this is step, step nine. Maybe you wanted to shift some of the step nine detail I don't know, like gradually somewhere else on our terrain over here, you'd literally just move the slider and you can see it's basically scrolling and adjusting it like that. Now, I don't, I honestly don't use this offset feature that much, uh, but that's basically what this feature does. So just keep that in mind. Remember that the level strength over here for the fractal noise level is working from big shapes all the way down to the really finer details on your terrain. So it's just a nice way to keep control 
of all of that. Okay.